I wrote two snippets of code that have the same functionality. They both use a low-level language to perform some basic math, one in C and the other in C++. But one program runs almost 20% slower than the other. In this video, we'll break down how C++ polymorphism works under the hood, what the keyword virtual is used for, and why it's ultimately kind of slow. But why is it so slow? I guess we'll see. We're trying to make a calculator that can perform several types of math operations. But a generic operation doesn't just exist on its own. An operation has specific functionality like addition, multiplication, etc. This problem is referred to as polymorphism, or simply writing something in code that can take multiple forms. By designing our code around a generic form of the class, in our example, an operation, we can create what is called an interface, which describes the behavior of a derived class without specifying the details of its implementation. The code written in C uses a structure to represent a generic operation and at runtime uses an enum to determine what operation to perform. So if the enum says, hi, I'm an add, it'll add. If it's a multiply, it'll multiply, etc. But hold on, C doesn't allow for objects. So inherently, this code isn't really object oriented. Actually, it can't be object oriented. C is not an object oriented language. So technically, this code isn't polymorphic, it's just well-written code. Also, notice that we can't use functions inside of the structure like we can in an object-oriented language. We can't say operation.execute or operation the reference and execute. Well, in C, technically we can use function pointers in a structure, but the syntax is kind of gross. So if we wanted to do formal object-oriented programming, this would not pass the test. Instead, we have to use C++. C++ allows us to use classes, which are basically just structures with function pointers inside of them. Classes in C++ can also be derived from one another, meaning that if I have a base class B and a derived class D, which is derived from B, all of B's attributes become part of D. First, we have to define the parent class, which represents the generic thing we're trying to represent. In this case, we'll define a generic operation class. The operation class will have two operands called operand1 and operand2. The operation class will also have a function called execute where the operation will take place. By not implementing any functions, this operation can be considered an interface. It describes what needs to be implemented, but not how. But again, remember, a generic operation doesn't exist. The execute method needs to be overridden by a child class that will implement this method. To make this possible in the parent, we have to call this a virtual method or a method that is allowed to be overridden by a child class. By making this virtual and setting it equal to zero inside of the class in its memory, it creates what is known as a V table or virtual table, which later will account for the slowdown in our code. It is important to note that by default, functions with the same signature in a derived class are virtual in the parent by default. However, for code readability, it's important to use the virtual keyword so that readers of the code know that the code is intended to be overridden. To override this function, execute, let's make our child class, add. And the execute function for add, which adds operand1 and operand2. Now that we have our derived class, how do we use the polymorphism in our code? To invoke the polymorphic class, we create a pointer for the generic class, an operation, and point it to an instance of our derived class, for example, our add. And then we call execute on the operation class and our add happens. But wait a minute, how did operation know what method to call? You know, we defined a zero method and our add method how did it know which one to go to? When we call operations execute method, the operation class's vtable is invoked, and this is where things start to slow down. For the generic operation class to know what function to call, all derived classes contain a pointer to a vtable or virtual table in the child class object memory. 
Now, I know I've said Vtable a few times now in this video, so what exactly is a Vtable? A Vtable is just an array of function pointers to functions that are overridden by the child class. Vtables from the same parent all have the functions in the same order, so that when a parent invokes a virtual method, it knows what index in the table to call. For example, the virtual method execute is always in position one in a derived operation vtable. This way, whether it's an add or a multiply or a subtract, the base class will always invoke execute and not something else. So while the order of the vtable is the same, the function itself will be different depending on the implementation by the child class. Let's walk through a constructor and see it happen live. Here in the assembly for our calculator program, we see the constructor for the add operation calling the parent constructor for operation. After this, it copies a pointer to its specific vtable into its memory before returning from the constructor. So when the operation eventually calls the execute method, it looks into its own memory, finds the vtable pointer, finds the function pointer in the vtable at the known offset, and then calls that. Did you hear what I said? Yeah. It not only has to dereference the pointer to itself in memory, but then dereference another pointer to find its vtail only to figure out what function to call. And this is why vtables are so slow. Every invocation of a child class method requires at a minimum two pointer dereferences, which is a memory load into memory before any code execution takes place. Now, that may not sound awful, but Memory lookups are some of the slowest operations in computing. If your child class's vtable isn't loaded into cache, the cache miss on RAM could result in a significant performance hit. This is why our C code was ultimately faster, and why C++ polymorphism using virtual methods is generally thought to be slower. In our C code, we used a structure that contained a variable to tell us which area in our switch statement to jump to. This was only one layer of memory misdirection and could possibly be even further optimized using additional caching schemes using registers in the background. Our C++ code, on the other hand, wasn't so lucky. Every time we invoked our operations virtual execute method, two memory loads occurred. And the craziest part is that in my example, I called the same vtable every single time, which means that this program wasn't even cache missing. Imagine if it was. So maybe polymorphism just sucks. Do you see what I mean? Now, if you wanna learn other ways to make your code faster, check out one of these two videos and I'll see you next time.